God has made you the basic you the way Amen. he wants you. Amen. And your kids too. So don't try to make them be something they don't know how to be. Hi friends, welcome to Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast, where my friends and I talk about God's Word and the real stuff of life, and we hold nothing back. I'm Ginger Stocky with Aaron Cluley, Jay, and of course, Joyce Meyer. We're all in different stages of life. A young career woman and mom to two sweet kiddos. An accomplished songwriter facing an unexpected new life's journey. A leader, creative, and author with a heart for adventure and a world-renowned Bible teacher whose personal story has impacted millions. And there's you. Because sometimes you just need to talk about life with your girlfriends. So consider yourself one of us, and let's talk it out. Friends, you are going to love this. We have some special guests and a very special program today. And um, have you ever asked the question, what would I tell my younger self if yes. I had the opportunity? And that's what we're talking about today. Yes. And um, first of all, let me say this, because you, you guys you guys are such wonderful people. <laughs> to, oh. You are in so many different ways. But we're kind of having a takeover show today. Yes. Because kind of our it friends Joyce and Chris Kane and Lisa Harper are going to kind of take over this episode. If any, ever anybody's going to take over a show, it feels like it should be them. Yeah, I was kind of like, I think I can let Chris Kane, you know, I feel like I was more like, she could be me. <laughs> Well, I was going to know which one of you yeah, that was, that was for Chris a second. Kane. That was my Chris Kane. <laughs> <laughs> but if we're going to, like, seriously, it was an honor to, like, no, absolutely. To, to have him sit on our lovely pink couch <laughs> and really just share all kinds of knowledge. It was fantastic. It was, I was back there, like, let yeah, me, me take too. notes. Yeah. Me too. So this is from our women's conference that our very last, most recent women's conference, we had this opportunity to kind of have a... a girl chat discussion mm-hmm. there, share it with everybody. And now we, we want to share it with you too. But yes. like you guys said, it, there was so much just powerful stuff for life lessons of all different faces, phases of life. And we asked those questions like, okay, what would you tell your teenage self? Mm-hmm. What would you tell your motherhood self mm-hmm. yeah you know what all the different questions and so yeah. many different things that we were able to get into a lot of different angles of life yeah and it was oh. interesting because they all have such different perspective mm-hmm. which is why we all love doing this too because we're learning from each other and just to hear from them who they grew up differently in different ages it was so good so mm-hmm. yeah i'm like yeah i'm like oh i got it yeah that too oh got it well like to even hear joyce say like you'll get you guys will hear it she like said she didn't even start having fun until she was 50 yeah like i'm just now 41 you know so it's like, there's a lot of fun ahead. i have so and, and, and to see how full her life is at her age even now it just I mean it was just something exciting to see and super hopeful mm-hmm. it, was, it, it made me full of hope and yeah. joy to see like wow I mean I still have so much time yeah. you know to do things so yeah it was, it was good to I'm going to talk to her for just a second yeah so if you could just she's not here yeah yeah. Disappear. Yeah, this is a, Jay and I need to chat for just a quick second. So we got to talk real okay. quick. We got, wait, wait a you minute. Can listen, but you can't speak. We're going to talk about you, but you don't need to know about yeah. this. Can we just talk about how great the host was? Yes, she was, of kind, that. Of, she was kind of a baddie on there. She, she did a really good job. She did really great, yeah. like moderating that and to keep that conversation moving. Mm-hmm. Because you know what? One thing I know, like you got to be some type of host. If you can keep three preachers yes. at a time. Right. <laughs> in a in a minute. Minute. <laughs> Honey, because all yeah. of them can preach, okay? Yeah. I'm talking about 45 to <laughs> minutes to an hour. They can go. She got them going. But she got them going. That takes a special skill. So, Well, how fun to be able to talk with this group and and just laugh mm-hmm. and realize how we all have so much in common. Yeah. And involving the 15,000, however many yeah. women that were there too. It was It's just like sitting in a great big living room with all your best friends. Absolutely. It was really special. It felt very intimate, even though there were so many people in there because we were connecting. Yeah. yeah. And, and I needed it. It was fun to see like people 
responding to almost like a talk it out. Like, you know, yeah, I think yeah. it, it, because we don't we never get to see people. We envision you guys yeah, all yeah, yeah, listening. Yeah, yeah. We, we're like, I hope they're listening. I hope they're <laughs> laughing. I think I hope they think we're funny. You know? <laughs> like I'll laugh no matter what. But to 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 see the women really engage, mm-hmm. it was it was fun to see. Yeah. 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 So should we do it? You know what? It was just so good that I I think we should just share it with everybody. Let's do it. You guys check it out. <laughs> so we've all done this together before because we have Joyce's Talk It Out podcast. You've all been on it. We love and it. And it's so fun when you guys are with us. We have like, a what blast. Is this? I know, this is a bit of... So yeah, get cozy, get comfy. That is so cozy. I love... Let's just all sit on the couch. <laughs> All right, we are going to be talking about what you would tell your younger self. So there has been advancements in technology and there is now a way to text yourself messages back in time. Wow. Uh Uh-huh. It's not real. Don't look for it on your app store, but... Wow. So let me just start with this. What's the first thing that pops into your mind? What's the first thing that you thought, I'm gonna tell my younger self this? I would tell her not to try to peel off Spanx with a fresh manicure. Ah, brilliant, brilliant. (laughs) Love it. I figured you'd come up with that. (laughs) First of all, I can't even get Spanx on. I don't know how anybody does that. I mean, I'm like, you could hurt yourself trying to put a pair of those things on. No, I, I'm, I would tell her to eat more carbs while she can. That what? Do it while your metabolism is working. Eat more carbs right. while you can. Eat more carbs right. while you can. <laughs> what pops into your head, Joyce? I just think it's so important to enjoy your life. And uh, so many people put that off until mm. when this, when this, yeah. when this, mm-hmm. when this. But it seems like, you know, if you can't enjoy waiting... You're never going to enjoy your life because if you really think about it, you spend more time waiting than you do anything else. Mm-hmm. You wait for God to do something and you wait and you wait and then finally he does it. And that's a thrill and you enjoy it for a little bit, but it's not very long at all. And yeah, that thing you were so excited about is ho-hum now and so you're waiting on something else. Mm-hmm. So we just need to learn how to wait well and how... To enjoy life and you know I had issues things that needed to be changed in me but I didn't you know God enjoys us from the get-go he knows what he's getting when he calls us into relationship with him and I did I, I kept wanting to change before I can enjoy mm-hmm. myself I, mean, I talk too much I do this mm-hmm. I do that or do something else and you just you need to make a decision today that you're gonna start enjoying yourself right where you're at because God does enjoy you That's right. and uh, that's right. So I, I, I would have had a lot more fun, worried a lot less. Who's going to leave here determined to have more fun? Worry less. Yeah. Good advice from friends. Joyce always says that you live life forward, mm-hmm. Yeah. but that you learn from it backwards. You essentially. understand it backwards. You understand it backwards. So mm-hmm. I think there's so much that, that we can share that we've learned that all of you can share with each other, you know, mm-hmm. after you hear this conversation. I hope that you'll share it together because mm-hmm. there are so many lessons. Mm-hmm. So let's start with what you would tell your teenage self, mm-hmm. those teenage years. And we've got a lot of moms of daughters. We've got some young women out in the crowd. What would you tell your teenage self? I think I'd tell myself that there's no dark side to God. Mm. And I came to Christ when I was a kid. Um, I have a similar backstory to Miss Joyce's. Um, So I knew that God had sent Jesus to deliver me from my sin. I didn't think he liked me very much. Mm. I felt like I was way too dirty to be in God's family. So I was just always running scared and trying to be a good girl. And I, I didn't know what it was to be loved by God. Mm -hmm. So I spent years as a very um, stiff, saved girl. Took a long time to trust him enough to really linger in his arms and get liberated. And I was always afraid somebody would look under the hood, you know, and Mm -hmm. find find me wanting. And I think I would just open my own hood a lot sooner. Me too. I echo that. And I'd also say, 
Because I was so not normal. <laughs> I'm way more normal now than I was <laughs> back then. <laughs> but, really? But, um, I would have told her it's okay. God has a place in his kingdom for someone like you. I mean, I was so like you. That's why we're so connected at the womb. And so because um, I, I was just not like the other girls. I, I, I didn't, you know, my mum would get devastated because she'd like take me to the store to buy me dolls and I'd be in the book section or in the sports section. And back in my day, because I'm elderly, that was like very um, odd. You know, that was not what girls did. And so I spent so much time, I remember thinking like, why did you make me a girl? Why did you make me, you know, why couldn't I be like my brothers? Because we came from a staunch Greek family where the men were everything, you know, and a woman was very secondary. And, um, and I would think, why did you put all this in me to frustrate me? And mm. I think I would tell her that, you know, God didn't put it in, a, in you to frustrate you but it's part of your purpose and it's part of your gifting right. and it's part of your calling. That's great. And I think that would have um, been a lot better. Yeah. yeah, so good. I think when you're a teenager especially, you really start to worry about what other people think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, wanting so much to be accepted. And that's really a very important time for teenagers because they can really, it's like a crossroads, you know, you can really yeah. stand your ground and be who you are and not get sucked into the crowd. And I, Dave and I have several grandchildren that I'm really proud of that, you know, were still virgins when they got married. Mm. They were very, very strict about I believe in God, this is what I'm going to do, and if you don't like me, that's your problem. They were okay being by themselves, if they had to be by themselves. And uh, it, it really can be a very difficult time for teenagers if they get into that peer pressure trap of trying to be like everybody else. And I'm so glad that I found out that God didn't make us to be like everybody else. We're mm -hmm. all very unique. Mm -hmm. I mean, there may be some similarities. Our personalities are somewhat alike. Usually people that do this kind of thing, they are all four of us up here have got some similarities. But yet there's differences, and it's okay to be different. Mm -hmm. And maybe some of you are still trying to figure that out. You're still trying to be like somebody else. And I'll tell you, it's just the biggest waste of time because you gotta be you, everybody else is already taken. You can't, you just can't be right. somebody else. And so I really, yeah. I really want you to enjoy yourself. I didn't start enjoying myself until I was probably in my 50s and still learning. I think I've mm -hmm. finally got that one, but I felt so bad about myself, yeah. guilty all the time and always coming up short because I wasn't what somebody else wasn't like you. Maybe I didn't sense it so much in my teenage years as my young adult years, but I just wasn't like other women. You know, I didn't, I didn't like a lot of the things they liked. You know, they were all going to home decorating parties and I wanted to stay home and learn how to cast out devils, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just wasn't, wasn't like them. And so because I wasn't like them, I thought there was something wrong with me. And I just want to tell you loud and clear, there is not something wrong with you because you are not like somebody else. Right. Yeah. Please get right. that. Yeah. Right. I would tell my younger self to risk it. It's great. I would say live big, tell yeah. the boy you think he's cute. Right. You know, don't be afraid and just put yourself out there because no matter what happens, even that rejection, right. Right. You'll, you'll learn through it. Right. So I would, I would love to tell my younger self that. Okay, what would you tell your younger mother self? Mm. 
because you've all learned so much Mm. and you're all in different stages, which I love, of where you are in your motherhood journey. Missy's how old? Missy's... Missy's 13. Missy's 13. She is a precious little thing. We love Missy. And then, Chris, your daughters... 20 and almost 17. And Joyce has one of everything. Oh, yeah. (laughs) My baby is 42. (laughs) So what would you tell your motherhood self? Anybody? Okay, I'm looking at you. Um, I became a mom really late in life. I became a mother through the miracle of adoption the exact same season I was going through menopause. So I... Yikes. uh, (laughs) I was a real sweaty young mother. Um, (laughs) But, um, and, and I feel like I've had Missy home from Haiti for eight and a half years, and I think I've made every single mistake known to motherhood in that eight and a half years. But I love her so much. And I just, she's tangible grace. She's not my hope. Jesus is my hope. But I was such a train wreck. And the way God wove me into Missy's story was such a a palpable miracle that when she wakes up, I'm like, look what he did. And so I think it's just gratitude is the only thing I do really well in motherhood. And I I think if a child knows they're loved, um, they'll stay between the ditches. Mm -hmm. I love that. I would tell her firstly, there will come a day you will sleep again. Yeah. There is sleep in the future. Um, That's a really important message. I think it is, because it's like, (laughs) if you just know you will. Hang (laughs) on. It's coming. Uh, And just to chill out and don't major on minors, because it really does, a lot of the stuff you think is going to matter, it's not going to matter. I'm going to set someone free. Um, I know there are people that are obsessed with breastfeeding. I'm going to go there. And people that aren't. <laughs> Just do you do you, boo. Whatever that's suits right. you, it's okay. okay. So that's... And I just think we get so caught up. And again, it comes back to the comparison thing. Like, am I doing it like someone else? And mm-hmm. so you have yeah. to understand. Yeah. I would also say, because I was 40 as well when, you know... Um, of 35 and 40 when I had my kids already in full-time global ministry. So I wasn't like a 20-year-old mother in that different Mm -hmm. season. And um, I would have been just a little bit more gentle on myself, like don't understand that it's a unique journey for every mother. That's the thing, I think. And I think I'd tell her not to be surprised. I grew up, uh, my mom's Baptist of the bone, my dad's Assembly of God, so I grew up kind of Bapticostal, uh, which means I... (laughs) I want to dance in worship, but I have very questionable rhythm. But um, <laughs> we were taught, and I thought if I said a word that's not in the Bible, there's a grease tube that led straight to the hot place. I was shocked when I became a mom how many bad words. If somebody messed with my kid, it's like, I will cut you. And so, um, so young mamas don't say bad words. But, and I know Joyce has some great books about that that help me cleanse my mind, but don't be surprised <laughs> when you want to say them when someone's unkind to your child. I, I've never been a, much of a fighter until I became a mom. And then it's like, you will do anything to, to guard their heart and, and mine as under the Lord. I wish I would have known then that everybody's different. Yeah. And I didn't. And... Um, I know you all probably think like I did. You may have four or five kids, and you think, how could you all have come out of the same place <laughs> and been so... Not literally the same place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. And been literally so completely different mm. in personality. And so if you do have a few kids, I had four, I had one of everything. Mm. And... You, you can't, you have to meet people where they're at mm-hmm. instead of expecting yeah. all of them to be what you want them to be. Mm-hmm. And so a lot good. of times you want them to be you, and sometimes you don't even really like yourself yet. Yeah. Right. That was one of the reasons why I had such a hard time getting along with David is he was just a lot like me, and I didn't really like myself, so mm-hmm. it's hard to like him. So I had... One strong choleric, I had one perfectionist, and she was, you know, a perfectionist can be hard. I mean, they're so hard on themselves, and you love them so much, and you don't want to see them mm-hmm. go through the things they go through. And uh, uh, then I had one, 
<laughs> Full-blown sand going. I mean, I don't care what you did to him, he'd have a good time with it. And uh, <laughs> if, if, I remember one time sending him out to sweep the back porch, and I looked around, and he's out there dancing with the broom, and I thought, oh, God. He hated school. I was so happy when he finally got out of school. I had to hire a private tutor and stick her right in his face to get him through school. There was no talk about college. Mm -mm. I'll give you a job, but there's no talk about college. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you, I love what the Apostle Paul said. He said, I've learned to the Jew, I'm a Jew, to the Greek, I'm a Greek. Mm -hmm. You know, he met people where they were at right. instead of trying to make them come to him. And I really encourage you to remember that just like you can't be somebody else, neither can your child. And you, you need to celebrate who they are and not make them feel like there's something wrong with them. Don't ever compare one of your kids with another one. Yeah. Don't ever say, why can't you be more like your brother? Why can't you be more like your sister? You know, some people are naturally smarter than others. Christine has just like got a brain five times the size of mine. She can read a whole book on an airplane. And I, you know, uh, I'm just not, I mean, I'm smart, but I'm not like her. And that's okay, you know? I'm, what I, think I you, don't have, huh? I think you're doing okay. Thank you, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing, what you don't have, God will make up for. Mm. Totally. So, so good, yeah. And another thing I would tell you is don't worry so much about whether you're gonna be a good parent or not. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, I had the worst example anybody could have, and I, even my daughter has told me several times, she said, I am really amazed that you did such a good job raising us considered, considering how you were raised. Hmm. And uh, God will anoint you to be a parent. Yeah. You, don't, you don't have to, you know, instead of, if you had a bad example, instead of turning around and being what they were, learn from what they did not to do that. Mm -hmm. And just don't worry about it. Take it easy. You know, I, I thought, I mean, my one daughter, I, I mean, some of my kids, I thought, are they ever going to be able to even get a job? I just, I didn't know if they'd ever even be able to leave home and survive, you know? <laughs> and now they take care of me. Yeah. And so just chill. Mm -hmm. They'll make it. <laughs> that, that reminds me because, you know, when, when your kids are different and you're going through different stages of motherhood, there's always a time, I hope always, it'll, it'll make me feel better if there's always a time that as a mom, you say, I don't like that one right now. You know, this person is hard to love right now. <laughs> and so I think it's so important to realize that every stage changes. Yeah. That whatever hard time you're going through, it's going to shift. God's going to help you through it. He's going to help them through it. Hold on and wait. And he's going right. to bring you around. That reminds me, we, we asked some of you for questions as well. And Joyce, this question's for you, and I love it. It says, Joyce, I love your book, Loving People Who Are Hard to Love. What should I do if I'm the one who's hard to love? Ooh. <laughs> well, first of all, knowing that yeah. puts you miles oh, ahead of anybody else. So you're already on your way to freedom if you know that. And I get that because I was hard to love. And knowing that you are gives you an advantage because now all you need to do is start having some good conversations with God and realize that everything is not gonna change all at once. The wonderful thing about the Holy Spirit is he's a gentle healer. Yeah, beautiful. And he, he never, see, if, if we try to do it ourselves, we try to do way too much at one time. Mm -hmm. It's like, I talk too much, and I this too much, and I that too much, and I'm not this, and you know, I mean, I thought I needed to be a better wife and a better mother, and I needed to be more artsy and crafty and have a garden and make my family's clothes, and I needed to be sweet like, you know, my pastor's wife, and I tried to be sweet, and none of it just worked. It just... <laughs> It just didn't work. I mean, I still am. You know, you, you've got a basic temperament and God can, can change some of our moral behavior, but he's not gonna 
He's not going to make you something that you're not. And uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> Sorry, Chris is cracking up. Chris is just thinking of, go, I'll just let you guys figure this out. <laughs> what? What are you saying? <laughs> what? You're the sweetest person I know. Oh, I'm the sweetest person you know. Yeah. <laughs> That's because you only see me twice a year. <laughs> No, I, I have, God has God has changed me, and I am, I am pretty sweet now. But I'll never be like that. Uh, I mean, I tried to have a real sweet, soft voice, and I mean, I mean, I really tried that. And people are going, "What are you doing? Uh -huh. Can Can you imagine now if I was on television, and any man trying to watch me, if I was like, "Honey, you are just so sweet, and I love you so much." No, you got to get in their face and tell them, <laughs> tell it like it is. And so God has made you the basic you the way Amen. he wants you Amen. and your kids too. So don't try to make them be something they don't know how to be. That's good. You know, I love what she's saying there because the scripture says train up a child in the way they should go, not right. the way you want them to go. And... Um, one of the benefits of not becoming a parent until you're 35 or 40 and all your friends and peers um, are now becoming grandparents, it means you've learned from all their mistakes. Right. And so that actually has been really helpful for me. So now when my youngest one, that's really quirky like her father, very odd and quirky. And um, so she'll Is quirky a safe word to use that's for this? It. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so she'll come one day, you know, with red hair, the next day with black hair. Now, I would think the me of 30 years ago, and had I not met you and other mothers that were older, I might have um, really freaked out. Whereas nowadays, I'm like, it's your hair. If it falls out, knock yourself out. Like, it's just like, I don't, <laughs> literally, literally, that is my statement. She goes, Mom, can I, you know, do my hair red? I'm like, knock yourself out. If you're going to bleach it, fall out. Yeah. You know, there, there yeah. it is. And I don't lose any sleep. And there's no big deal. And you're right, the next month, it wants to be a different colour anyway. So who really cares? So that's, that's good. I that's think really good. That is a really good benefit. And looking, Catherine and Zafir are so different. And going, okay, don't try. My kids are not there to make me look good. And, um, that's good. you know, that is huge. that's the big thing. That is huge. And so the pressure, and particularly if you're in ministry and on a platform, is oftentimes you can be harder on your kids because you think they're a reflection of you. And right. so instead of getting your significance or security, Security or affirmational value from God, yeah. you're actually trying to get it from right. your kids and you're putting a pressure on them that God never put upon them. Yes. And it right. is so wrong. Yeah. It's so, Especially if you're doing something like we're doing. Totally. Because <laughs> people try to judge you by that. And, right. and then the kids feel that pressure. And so I just um, thank God. Again, I'm not saying a younger me probably would have made a lot more mistakes, but I... I have learnt. I, I mean, I've had Mama Jay. I probably still wouldn't be married or a mother if I didn't have her, you know. So, um, but, but I can see how that is such a pressure on when parents, if you're broken and insecure on the inside, you're going to think um, that you're, you're going to be using your kids basically uh, yeah. to fill a need or a hole or some sort of external value and it's just out of order. You're mm -hmm. there to train them up in the way they should go with right. the gifts and callings God has put on them and then launch them into the atmosphere as arrows for the glory of God. That takes so much pressure off. Yeah. It, it really yeah. does because there's a lot of pressure for moms. Totally. And that, that really takes it off because the advantage like you were saying of, of how we live life forward but we understand it backwards is as moms with older children now, we're able to see what God has done in their life. And it just right. amazes me, it floors me, the, the things that He has used, the experiences and how He's shaped them and the beautiful things that He brought out of them that mm -hmm. I had no idea were coming and are mm -hmm. so exciting to see. Mm -hmm. Trusting God through this journey, yeah. it is not easy every day, but trusting God through this journey, He knows what He's doing. It amazes me how much I worried yeah. And how, and how good all my kids have turned out. You know, it's just, just chill and relax. And remember, you're not what you were when you were 13 or 14 or 15. And oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and 
remember that God loves your kids more than you do. So there's right. a yeah. God factor in all of this. Yeah. Right. And they've got to encounter him um, themselves. And I think our putting undue pressure on them and not acknowledging that there's a process um, and the Lord's calling him to themselves and the Holy Spirit's working in their lives. And yeah. you, you have to just give them that space. I think that's, I, I just want to say, and then I'll, I'll stop. You know, where I got most of my pressure, and girls, I'll say this, because this is the living room. And Absolutely. this is the girls. Um, it's all safe. Yeah, it, it, very safe with, you know, 30,000 of my closest friends. So, um, <laughs> But where I got my initial most pressure um, for parenting, and again, I was an older mum, 35 and 40. 35, I had my first, 40 my second. And I was already in full-time ministry, but it was actually from other women who had chosen a different journey with their children. They were right. stay-at-home mothers, um, many homeschooling mothers. I would get more sort of looking down their nose at me or guilt. Now, they love my teaching. They want um, the encouragement. I don't know how I'm supposed to do both. I wasn't able to be a stay-at-home mum and on the road 300 days yeah, a year. It yeah. just wasn't going to work. And it works the other way around too. Those stay-at-home moms feel the same thing. Exactly. Well, that's what I, how yeah. it landed for me was my kids, when they wanted to go to school, there was a, a, um, a stay-at-home mum and she would volunteer at the school three mornings a week. And I remember I would travel so much and I'd take Sophia and Sophia would run up to this mum, Sharon was the name, I loved her to be. And they would hug, and I would hold Sharon's hand, and she would hold my hand. We'd pray for each other, and I'd say, Sharon, I thank God that you're called to be a stay-at-home mum, and that you go to the school three days a week because it makes my heart feel so safe that mm -hmm. my kid has got a Christian, godly woman three mornings a week that comes and inputs, okay. and then yeah. I can go and take the gospel to the world, where one body, many parts, and instead of judging each other's parenting, why don't we help each other, right. celebrate each other, yes. and affirm each other? Right. So yeah. Yeah. All right. You're sending this text. What would you tell your younger self about aging? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Let me just say. <laughs> you know, I was telling myself this the other day. I just turned 59 a couple of weeks ago, so I keep saying 60 so that I'll get used to it. It gets better because walking with Jesus gets better. You become more convinced that he really does love us. He didn't just come to deliver us from our sin. He came because he delights in us. He wants relationship with us. Um, I've been so struck by Joyce saying, I finally begun to like myself. And that's not any kind of self-help. It's Bible. Yeah. It's biblically, uh, biblical narrative all through and through. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you begin to believe he's undone by me, he longs to spend time with me. I can peel off my spanks in God's presence. I don't have to hold in my <laughs> stomach. I can linger in his arms then everything else is not that big a deal. And then you kind of lose um, your up-close vision so you can't see mm -hmm. what's sagging anyway. So, um, <laughs> Isn't it, God good? I mean, honestly, <laughs> I feel like it gets better. There's some places where I've slowed a step or two. I get really excited when I get to preach. And a few weeks ago, I jumped off a stage and I didn't want to scare the people. And I thought, I just shattered my ankles. Um, I didn't, but it, it hurt like the dickens. And I thought, I probably don't need to jump off stages anymore now that I'm almost 60. So there's a few things that slow down, but for the most part, it gets better because your heart gets bigger. And then everything kind of falls in line with your heart, I think. Yeah, good. I mean, case in point. Yeah. Uh -huh. Exactly. You know, I wrote that book, How to Age Without... Mm -hmm. Getting, getting old, old. yeah. <laughs> and um, age really is a number, and old is a mindset. Right. That's what I mean. I so I do wise. not at all feel seventy nine. You I don't, don't look it either. Just so you know. I don't. I don't think I have to dress old. I don't. I don't need to try to look like I'm twenty. But right. Uh, you have to be willing to make mm. changes. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when this conference is over. I'm going to be tired because I give everything that I have yeah. when I'm doing it. And so 25 years ago, when a conference was over, I'd go shopping. Now I'll rest, and I've found out that even one day is not enough. I need two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you, 
anybody who thinks that they can just keep doing the same thing forever is just foolish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you have to make changes. And one thing I'll tell you, if you want to be in good shape as you get older, you need to start when you're young taking care of yourself. Totally. When you think you don't need to. Oh, I don't need to, I don't need to work out. I, I look good. I don't, you know. You, man, I didn't start working out till I was 62. I wish I would have started sooner. And uh, I do a lot of things now in order to be able to do this. I just started having somebody come. I'm getting professionally stretched. Not to get taller, but to be able to keep moving. And uh, That's great. Right. if I do, you know, get down on the platform, I want to be able to get up. I don't want, you know, right. I want somebody to have to come and carry right. me up. And so you need to make an investment in yourself. You know, a lot of people wait until they're sick mm -hmm. to do anything about it. And the whole idea is to do something before you get mm -hmm. to that point. I think that's key. I, I, I think a key part of why I have so much energy still and can keep going is I've been working out um, since my early, yeah. well, always. I haven't actually not. Happy birthday. I'm 56 today, so how is that for so I've had I've had my last 25 years of birthdays with Joyce at the women's conference, so I feel like I'm home for my birthday anyway. And so, the, but at 56, I probably feel stronger than I ever have. I mean, I'm climbing more mountains than I've ever done. Um, I feel stronger and healthier by the grace of God and fitter, but there's a commitment. And I agree with needing more recovery time now. Just being, I mean, I'm mm -hmm. riding in Joyce's slipstream. So basically anything she's learned at 70, she's told me at 50. And I think, thank God, I've got it 20 years earlier. And so yeah. um, if you listen to her honestly, it mm -hmm. works. That's the deal. Yeah. And I, I'm sure that's why um, I'm flourishing now. So I'd be like, don't get scared of aging. We live in a youth obsessed, youth mm -hmm. idolatry culture. Mm -hmm. And as chicks especially, um, we like to hide women when they get older. I mean, that's, that's the cultural narrative. That's not the biblical narrative that's because right. we go from faith to faith, from grace to grace and from glory to glory. So it just yeah. gets better and better and better with God. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah. I'd like to add just the tiniest of caveats because I, I love to work out and I, and I love chips and queso. And so sometimes I get caught between the two. I just like to throw in leather pants because there's something about giving yourself a reward if you don't love working out. And leather pants when you're older, you know, I grew up in a, in a pretty rigid Christian environment, so I feel like I'm really being wild with leather pants. And then I bought a motorcycle. And there's something about that too. Just do something fun. So um, part of that is I'm single, so I think the leather pants and the motorcycle lead to endorphins as well. But, um, but get your, give yourself little goals. Don't set, I'm gonna run a marathon tomorrow. Set, I'm gonna get out of the house and walk around the block tomorrow. Give yourself, give yourself In goals. In your leather pants? Well, leather pants help me right. burn off a little bit of water weight. They do. <laughs> I, tr I tried on a pair of leather pants the other day, and I just said I can't pull this off. It's just not me. So of funny. course you can. Oh, well, you look great in leather pants. If I walked up here in leather pants, it would sound like ducks were being killed. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so much one could say right now. Moving on. <laughs> I want to give you guys a chance here at the end. Is there anything that you would like to ask of each other? Like any advice mm. things, anything that, you know, we're just sharing advice as friends. Any, any questions that you guys would like to pop off for each other? Mm. <laughs> if not, that's okay. I have another question. Well, I, I would. Joyce, from getting to watch you from the cheap seats for all these years, you have such a, um, I've never seen your passion for Jesus ebb or your love for God's word ebb. How have you kept walking so straight toward the Lord, just basic? When you get up in the morning those days that you don't want to lead a global ministry, that you barely want to open your Bible, what is that besides 
discipline and a gift from the Holy Spirit. Okay, hoping I don't sound overly super spiritual because uh, I'm very sincere. I, uh, I really, really, really love God. I mean, like, that's... I mean, I'm, I'm ruined for anything else. Yeah. You know, and uh, this is just my thing, but I don't get involved in a whole lot of stuff and with a whole lot of people. Um, mm -hmm. I really kind of feel like I belong to the Lord. I'm called to do something that is pretty major. Mm -hmm. right. And I really, really, really want to do it right. I don't, I don't ever want to make God ashamed or mm -hmm. I just, I really want to do it right. And every morning when I get up, and I can say every morning, I get my coffee and I go and I spend anywhere from one to three hours with the Lord. And it's different every day. You know, it's not, I mean, I've never seen Jesus walk into the room. I don't, I don't have a lot of spiritual dreams. And, you know, it's like, it's my, my relationship with God is pretty ordinary, but it's very comfortable. You know, it's like, I know that he loves me and I know that he accepts me the way I am. And, and I've finally grown to the point where I believe he's pleased with me. And I just think if you always keep God first in everything, if you always, listen, you don't have time not to have time for God. Right. You just, it's great. The, the best way in the world, I remember many years ago when I was working in ministry, I was so proud of myself that I worked for a church. <laughs> and God spoke to me one morning. He said, You're, you work for me, but you don't spend any time with me. Mm -hmm. And see, just because you're in ministry, that doesn't make up. See, I've, I've learned... My ministry is a, God, is a job that God has given me to do, but he still requires me to be a regular Christ, a Christian right. in my everyday life. When I do random acts of kindness, which I'm very fond of, I don't do that because I'm a minister. I do it because I'm a child of God. Right. right. And uh, I don't, I really try not to say anything in the pulpit that I don't live in my everyday life, but if you just, you, really, you gotta be careful about getting involved in too much stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you really can only have five really good friends and keep up mm -hmm. with them. And I know Christine knows the whole world, and I don't know how she does it, but I just, I can't handle that. Right. You know, I've got, I gotta keep it pretty narrow because mm -hmm. I gotta have room in my life for God to have the biggest part of it, mm -hmm. and so, I belong to him, and he's mine, and that's the way it's going to stay. Beautiful. Thank you. Great. Wasn't that the best? I yeah. just think that was some of the best conversations. And also, we would like to note that no ducks were harmed during the making of that video. <laughs> she is hilarious. <laughs> she is. They are almost crying. So fun. Right. Yeah. I know. They were. Yes. But you know what? I just think it's super fun. Like, that was so powerful. And a, a good lesson to learn that like, yeah. no matter what stage of life that you're in, we can all learn from each other, mm -hmm. glean from each other. I think it's, it was so amazing. Yeah. Some of the stuff that Chris said, and Lisa too, I mean, and always Joyce, but kind of gave me some freedom as a mom of young kids. Like uh, those are some mm -hmm. things that I need to be reminded of mm -hmm. and that I should take some pressure off myself and I don't need to be like every other mom and I need to run in my lane and not feel the need to compare so much. So yeah. that was that was really important for me yeah. to hear. It's all goodies. One note you would tell your younger self, either one of you, both of you? Hmm. Calm uh, down. Just take a breath. That's a good one. Yeah. Things change. Mm. Be flexible. And it's okay. And it's yeah. okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Yeah. I think I would tell my younger self, even when it doesn't look like it, it it's all going to work out. Mm. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a good one. Actually, I will take that from your younger self, and I'll apply it to my current self. <laughs> yeah, me too. Thank you. <laughs> me too. Okay. Right. That's good advice for today. I'll take that, double it, yeah. and throw it on my life right now. 
Thank you for that. Double thanks. I'll take it and I'll raise you. I'll raise you. I'll, I'll raise you too. too. Thank you. No, we do. We have so much to learn from each other. And life lessons are never wasted. No. So whether it's for someone else or it's just for your heart, mm-hmm. to, because I love being able to look back and say, God, thank you. Yeah. For those times that were so hard, that, that hurt so bad, mm-hmm. that now I can see how you were working, how you would yeah. never abandon me, how you had so many blessings hidden in there that I didn't even see at the time. Yeah. yeah. But I, I think that's so stabilizing for it our is. life mm-hmm. now. Yeah. I was just talking to someone this morning about how God's so good in his unanswered prayers. You know, like that's a country song. You don't know. You don't like country music. <laughs> but for those of us who do. but that, Those of us is probably just you, if I'm right. Yeah, not me either. Okay. But so, a lot of you, friends, you and your yeah, friends you country music. A lot of people. You, thank you. But you people that love country music. Got good taste. <laughs> that Some of God's greatest gifts are unanswered prayers, and I think that that's really good advice, too. It's that is just very to, sound, yeah. Yeah, to remember that it's not him not answering you, it's it's because he's protecting you. So looking back, like you just said, if I look back and see all the times I didn't get what I asked for, th- that was God's protection over my life. Mm-hmm. And that is something I would like to remind myself of. Yeah. yeah. And one thing that that um, segment really did for me, and we get to do it all the time because we, we do this, you know, on, on TIO, but talking about your testimony, like just the power of a testimony, mm-hmm. to, it just really is... It's powerful. Mm -hmm. You know, it's amazing because to see all of you guys sitting up there that are strong women in God, generals of the faith, people know all four of you, Mm -hmm. you know, and to be like, to to get that human aspect of like, wait, they're not perfect. What? They didn't know how to do that. What? It just humanizes Christianity. And so I think it's important, you know, we need to have more of that. And and another thing that I thought was super powerful, none of None of you really live in the same vicinity. Like, it's not like you all live in the same area. So that means that just because you you can still have those kind of deep conversations with like-minded people. Mm -hmm. I just say that as a tip to, like, some of our our friends. Like, you don't (laughs) have—we get to do this because we do live in the same area, and we get to do it all often, you know? However, people—if you share your stories and talk about Jesus with people— you know, find friends to talk about it because you don't know whose life you're in. Like the, everything that was shared on that platform was so powerful and so impactful. And that those testimonies really encouraged me, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. like personally. So yeah. share it with the person on the plane next to you. Exactly. I mean, unless there's God will open opportunities. <laughs> you know, they can't get away though. <laughs> no. right. So you, you can got talk hey, as yeah. much. <laughs> I'm going to tell you my story. They're giving, they're giving drinks now. Are you sleeping? <laughs> I got a testimony, to And I got to let it out. You can always throw in, it's good to know the Lord in case something bad would happen on yes. this flight. You yeah, know, they can just get their attention right away. Yes. Real gospel message. Yeah. <laughs> But now that I have your attention, I'd like to share with you some things. Uh, well, anyway, we've been talking so much about wisdom and what we would share with our younger selves. So we do have an offer for you today. Joyce has a book called In Search of Wisdom. And this is just great things that are gleaned from Proverbs, the best place to look for wisdom. So you can get that for your gift of any amount. Go to joycemeyer.org slash talk it out. And of course, there you can catch up on all of our episodes. Spend more time time with my friends Jay and Aaron today and you didn't <laughs> and ginger, and, ginger. <laughs> and the, we're the wise one. <laughs> oh my no 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 we're so glad that you're a part of all of this that you're here with us we love you all and we will see you next time bye joycemeyer.org slash talk it out is a wonderful place go there for today's resource to check out all of the episodes and to get to know us a little better Please don't forget to subscribe wherever you listen or watch Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast and let us know what you're thinking. Your voice is important to us.